Yeah, it's Maximus here, this time with a quick review of the GM Power Torque pass-through socket set. This is actually made by the same manufacturer as the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh <laughs> pass-through socket set. Although, surprisingly enough, the Pittsburghs come with a real comprehensive set of six-point sockets like these. Or these are spline drive, and unfortunately with spline drives is many times they're just sized for metric, and that's why it's uh, advertised in a fractional excuse me, fractional size in 30 seconds, is because even with spline drive sockets, they really need to be both metric and standard to fit properly. And I've showed that before. They just are a bit loose when you use them on fractional fasteners. So it's always kind of unfortunate. And I don't recommend uh, spline drive sockets for that reason. And the fact that the tight splines, they really do want to split out fat or strip out fasteners pretty easily. And they're talking about using them on star and square drive or torx and square square drives. Real easy way to uh, strip out those types of fasteners. Although in a pinch, maybe you have a square nut on a rod, you could use these. So somebody had asked if they did make spline drive in these pass-through sockets. And the answer is at least a GM power torque, they do. And they indeed are. The only difference between these two ratchets is the Pittsburgh has the soft grip handle and the Power Torque just has the standard steel handle. It is just a little bit shorter. The steel is the same length, but the Pittsburgh, this extra length here is just plastic. But it really is just exactly the same, exact same switch, forging, everything else. So same snap ring. We'll go ahead and pop this open. I did like it with the steel handle because... Even though plastic and soft grip handles are kind of nice, um, I also like just regular old steel where you don't have to worry about potential exposure to chemicals or anything. That some, you know, with all plastics, there's inevitably some type of chemical that may you may expose it to that will cause it to melt away essentially. Although this seems like it's, I don't think it's acetate. I think it's nylon, which is going to be a pretty chemically resistant. Still like the steel one. It is the same exact socket setup too, where they have little steel rings holding little offset ball detents. The reason the detents are offset is so that they'll actually stick in a 12 point fastener. This is essentially a 19 millimeter reversible, an overkill 19 millimeter reversible ratcheting box wrench. The older style Pittsburgh actually had one where it had a little snap ring inside. If I can get, yeah, you can just see it there. And uh, this was the one that always auto reversed. And I finally threw it against the ground and exploded, but I kept this. So I'm going to see if I can't get it to work in there because I have some of these old plug sockets that are 19 millimeter drives. So that little spring kind of holds them. So I'd like to see if that works. Not a lot else to talk about. I think this set's a bit expensive. It's $25 normally on the shelf. Uh, I bought mine as a return or an open box, and so obviously somebody didn't think that the value was great, and so I did get it for a pretty significant discount. I think I paid 15 bucks or something for it, and I think it's really just about worth that, even though it is made in Taiwan. I guess the last critique is this is a 10 and then a 12 through 18 millimeter, not a 19 millimeter. And yes, like GMs and stuff will use 18, but that's and actually, Power Torque is a at its root a GM brand, so that may be why they chose 18. But 19 millimeter or three quarter inch fasteners are far more common, like way more common. And so when they come with just 18 millimeters and not 19s, it's really pretty frustrating, because I mean, in the real world, 19 millimeter and three quarter inch are, you know, there's probably nine of those fasteners for every one fastener that you may run into that. Uh, would take an 18 millimeter so that is also just a bit short-sighted and i'd probably hunt around online until you can find just a more complete set of spline drives and probably avoid this power torque but i'll go ahead and uh open this thing up and we can even see if this <laughs> will actually work in it get some of this stuff out of the way pull this little snap ring out and Always try to keep your finger pretty easy to remove the snap ring. And then we do have a guide washer, which is super thick. Look how thick that washer is. 100% bone dry inside. That's pretty unfortunate. You'd think they would have uh, put at least a drop of lubrication, but you can see it's basically perfectly dry in there. It's also not looking good. For, it does have a floating polish. I should point that out. There it is. 
This newer design has a through pin, so it holds the pawl better, and these have just a bit less issues with self-reversing. If we pop that out, it just has a standard pin. This is the same type of uh, floating pawl design that's used in a variety of pair head ratchets. And on this one, it even says 72 tooth, 3 eighths. Pop that back in there. Now, unfortunately, my idea of being able to swap these two gears not looking real great, unfortunately. We can see that there is just a significant difference in design. Surprisingly enough, the older one had more surface area, but maybe that was part of the reason why it was uh, reversing so badly. So at least that answers that question. Really not a lot else to these. It's just a basic uh, ratcheting, reversing ratcheting box wrench that happens to come with a set of uh, specialized sockets. Anyway, I think I'm going to end that here. I'll reassemble it in a second. Put a little lube in there so it works a little bit better. Otherwise, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Catus Maximus out.